Hi, I'm Al Dayer, coming to you today from Mickey's Bait and Tackle in North Syracuse, New York. And um, we're going to tie a fly today, a traditional salmon steelhead pattern called the Firetail Spider. And the interesting thing about this fly is the material, one of the materials that it uses is called Edge Bright. It's a plastic, and um, I remember as a kid years ago, beach toys were made out of this stuff. It doesn't surprise me if, if they still are, but it's basically a translucent plastic, and when the edge with, uh, fluoresces, when the light hits it, it's like a, a fiber optic quality to, to this particular material, and we're going to incorporate that into this fire tail spider, but you probably saw this pattern all, uh, appear in Lake Ontario Outdoors magazine, and I, I want to take this opportunity to thank Troy and all the folks at Lake Ontario Outdoors Magazine for giving me the opportunity to share some of these fly patterns that I've come across over the years as a fly fisherman. I've been fly fishing a long time, you might say. But uh, let's start tying this one. I'm excited to get going on it. But the first thing is material preparation is very simple. Uh, Edge Bright is distributed by Haroline Dubbing. It's the only place I could find it. For, uh, a few years back, you could find it more readily. Originally, it was incorporated into a, a fly called the Dean River Lantern, which was a traditional West Coast steelhead pattern. Dr. Arthur Cohen of San Francisco was one of the first people to, to, to find out about this stuff. What you need is the edge bright itself, and you need a good sharp razor and a straight edge and a, and a white cardboard. And you basically, you put the, uh, the edge bright onto the white cardboard, and you're gonna cut a little thin tapered strip with your razor blade just like this, using the, uh, the ruler as a guide. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for that little guy right there, okay? And I've done these already ahead of time, but I just wanted to show you a little bit about the material preparation. Now we can actually get into the tying of the fly itself. In this case, I'm using a number four traditional salmon hook. You can use a spay hook, turned up eye, black. Place that in the vise, okay? And we'll get the old thread here. I'm using about a six knot thread. And I'll start my thread. And it's a great little fly to, uh, I tie these in fours, sixes, eights. You can tie them down to tens. It's a dark pattern. So uh, I like it for early season when the water's a little muddy. That little light at the end there just fluoresces so nicely. And uh, we've seen uh, tags fluoresce like in the green butt skunk and uh, they, they do a good job too, but this is just a little different. Kind of reminds me of the old LNS mirror lure, which is a uh, plastic lure from the 1950s that had like a, uh, a chrome interior and a plastic, translucent plastic on the outside. It looked very minnow like. Okay, the first thing I'm going to tie on, get rid of these and then put these babies on. The first thing I'm going to tie on is the actual edge bright itself. Let's go with the fluorescent pink. All right. The edge braid itself, and it's the tapered, narrow tip of the uh, the the, uh, the strip that I'm going to tie in. Get that established with my thread. Okay. And then I'm going to take a medium, flat tinsel mylar, and then tie that in, and that's going to be um, the silver side facing upwards. Okay. So we're basically making a silver tag from the flat tinsel. And we'll get that established here. So when you do wrap this, make sure that, that the gold is underneath and the silver is showing through. Okay. Get that established. And then I'll wrap my tinsel tag. Of course, it wants to do just the opposite I want it to do. There we go. Now the gold's on the bottom, silver's on the top. And I'll wrap forward towards my thread. And then I'll stop, wrap it just like that. Tie that off. Okay. There's your silver. Give that a cut. Okay, a few more wraps. Then I'll take the edge bright. And when I wrap the edge bright, I want it to overlap. I don't want it to be just a smooth surface. I want it to be jagged. I want the edges to protrude because that's what fluoresces. That's what, uh, when the light catches it, you get that uh, fiber optic quality 
that this uh, material imparts. So we're going to give that a few wraps. It's not that difficult to work with. It's the silver underneath that that allows it to really reflect light, though. You really need to have that silver tinsel underbody. And we'll tie that off, okay? And then get rid of the rest of the edge bright. All right. And then the next item, simple. This is a simple pattern. We're going to do some dubbing. And I, I like the Angora Goat because it's spiky. It's a little difficult to dub, and we're going to use the loop method when we dub this. So I'll get my fingers tacky here with some wax. We'll take a little bit of dubbing. And then, uh, remember, when you dub, don't try to put too much on at once. A lot of tires try to do that, and it's just so difficult for them. The less is more rule really applies here. You just keep adding as much as you need as you go along. Just take a pinch and then just put it on there. I'm rolling that between my fingers and the thread. That's about right, maybe about a four inch section for this particular size four fly. And then to loop dub this, what we'll do is we'll take a pair of uh, hackle pliers and I'll clip that right at the bottom there, just like that. Double the thread over what I just dubbed. Tie Okay, back to the shank of the hook. Get the bobbin out of the way. And there's my loop. Now I just begin to twist that. And as I twist it, it forms a really cool yarn. Okay. Now I can actually begin to wrap the body. Let me bring my thread forward towards the eye of the hook first. Now I begin to wrap the body of this pattern. And it is a spiky effect that we are getting. You see a lot of stone flies made from this stuff for that reason. It's very buggy. So we'll wrap that forward, forming that body. Okay. And um, with turned up eye salmon hooks, steelhead hooks, you never want to crowd the eye. So I'm going to move, make just enough body on that so as to allow a collar of guinea feather to be applied without crowding the eye. We'll talk a little more about that as we progress. And I'll tie that off. There's my buggy. There's that buggy body that we're looking at. Okay, beautiful. Don't even have to brush that out. This stuff is amazing. It is a little difficult to use, but when you get it down, it's, it's really cool. All right, now we're gonna take the guinea feather. And I, for some reason, uh, whatever, at aesthetics, I like to try to match the color of the butt to the guinea feather. In this case, it's a hot pink. Edge Bright comes in a variety of maybe four colors. You have a flame green, you have a, a, a fluorescent orange, fluorescent pink, and fluorescent red. And we try to match the, uh, the guinea feathers to the particular colors associated with each uh, Edge Bright. For some reason, it's, it's just there's something about aesthetics when it comes to angling. Don't don't ask me why. There is that romantic factor. This does catch fish, but it has to be not only pleasing to the angler as well as the fish. I suppose. I guess that's just that's just me. All right, I'm going to select a big enough feather because this is a spider pattern. So we want that hackle to sweep back quite a ways. There's the finished example. Okay, there's a finished example. So we want that hackle to sweep back quite a distance, so I'm going to have a wide, webby guinea feather. And I'll strip some of that flue off, get rid of that. And we're going to tie this in by the tip of the feather. I'll prepare that. There's the tip. All right. I'll get that established. And remember, don't crowd the eye. You want to leave a little space behind the eye whenever you're using a turned up eye hook or even for that matter, a turned down eye hook, because the reason is the Terrell knot, if you use the Terrell knot, which is a great knot for this style hook, uh, would require that little space. I know a lot of us use clinch knots, and I, I like the Duncan loop, but technically, when you're dealing with big fish, and you're dealing with turned up eye and turned down eyes, you can lose a fish if you don't use the proper knot. And the Terrell knot is the proper knot for this style hook. I learned that the hard way a few years back on the uh, Miramichi, losing a few salmon as a result of me wanting to insist on using a, uh, a clinch knot, or rather a, 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 a uni knot. So anyways, there's that hackle. I'm gonna sweep it back, doubling it, and I'm gonna wrap that forward. Okay, sweeping it back. And the, the beauty of the guinea feather is just the dots on that just come to life. Okay, there it is. 
I don't have to use the whole thing if I don't want to. And we'll tie that off. And then I'll trim, sweep back those hackles, and begin to form the head of this pattern. And the hallmark of a really professionally tied fly is the neatness of the head. Okay. Again, I'm leaving enough room behind that looped eye so to facilitate the uh, Terrell knot. Okay. That's it, basically. And then all we have to do really is whip finish. And then once we whip finish, we can apply our head cement. Okay, I like the old Mattarelli whip finish tool. If you know how to do that by hand, it's even better. Get that established. Boom. And we'll cut my thread. Perfect. There's your fire tail spider. And we obviously we are going to add a lacquer to that. And uh, I get them all set up all at once. And then I lacquer them towards at the end of my tying session. And a, a glossy black finish would really look good on that pattern. But boy, I'll tell you, use that when the water's a little high, off color. That little tail fluoresces really nicely. Tie these in different colors. You got green. You've got a hot orange or red. You've got a fluorescent pink. The blue is hard to find. I haven't seen that available in quite a few years. But this edge bright is really cool to work with. And uh, tight lines, that's all I can say. Get out there and throw some flies around. Thanks for stopping in. Bye-bye now.